everyone to the final Breaking Bad Broken Down episode. It's bittersweet, it's sad, it's depressing, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something very special for this episode. We're gonna go and go and go. <laughs> so, so many going. You right? know how Breaking Bad ended succinctly and wrapped everything up? Yeah. We're not, we're we're not gonna, gonna do that. Not gonna yeah. that. Well, the, and that's why we're on the Table Talk set. Joined here with the always amazing Richard Ryan, uh, who was with us last time. Thank you for coming back. Thank you, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Uh, DJ, editor, and uh, Breaking Bad fan extraordinaire, comic book nerd. Oh. Uh, really awesome dude. Thank you for coming. No, thank you for having me. And uh, <laughs> Elliot Morgan. Yeah, uh, Phil couldn't be here. Phil's in Florida, so uh, we're gonna just you know have uh, all of his opinions shattered and broken down. Do <laughs> yeah, that, so. and he can't defend himself if we we'll decide to go into certain territory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God, it's so tough to to start because I kind of wanted to just like go over the series as a whole, but before we mm. do that, we gotta just let's break let's down do. the final episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's break down the final episode. Okay. So uh, Elliot, you want to start off off with where? The, uh, the episode began. Well, sure. We uh, we start the episode with basically uh, Walter White getting into a car that is covered in snow and uh, trying to find the keys. And the entire time, you're like, bro, look above the visor. That's where they're always kept in TVs and movies. <laughs> Even though I don't know anybody in real life who's ever done that before. But um, he's there. Like Cops are passing. I think he prays, uh, which mm -hmm. is an uh, interesting thing that you never really see him do. Um, and he's like, just get me to whatever, and I'll take care of the rest. Um, and he uh, when he does this prayer, the keys fall down. He starts the car and he, he takes off and begins his journey of mayhem. Well, it's it seems it's supposed to be mayhem, but it turns out to actually be mostly very calm and calculated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, well, and, and, and that's the thing, like people want, like you know, they, the the Scarface analogy was brought up a lot uh, mm -hmm. about the finale of Breaking mm -hmm. Bad and about the series in general. Uh, and I think even Vince Gilligan brought up the Scarface analogy plenty of times. He was more a Michael Corleone. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. And that's the thing we 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 didn't. I mean, and everyone has these expectations, like because you know oh, that yeah. M60 oh, in yeah. the trunk. Well, you're yeah. thinking blaze of glory type thing, and it kind of was. It, it was yeah. it was a it was a really well calculated play. I mean, like him. Uh, I know we're jumping ahead of ourselves, yeah, yeah. but like the way you know him driving in, you don't know that that's why he's setting the trunk there, you think, oh, so he can run in there and grab it out and then just start mowing everything <laughs> yeah. You don't think that, oh yeah. no, he's put this up on a servo motor so that when the deck lid pops open, it starts this initiating sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Right, all those forward. words. Totally. <laughs> and then we get Jesse's flashback. Before was, we get there, can okay. we take a moment to stop on the fact that weird prayer that he does? Because yeah. it's weird, it's the the relation to the he cosmic gets a and the prayers. show. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a weird, because it's who is he talking like who's he you don't know to? Well, and I the mean, show has a weird relationship with the cosmic in that there's always been like there's an episode in Fly the uh, scene in Fly where he, where he calculates the chances of him running into Jane's dad and it's astronomical and I think the show did something smart in that there's a lot of in a lot of TV shows there's a lot of coincidences that allow things sure. to happen mm -hmm. and this they, show they write themselves into corners and then they like yeah and this show out, made out. it part of the makeup that that there is some sort of force. And it's Vince Gilligan that's driving. <laughs> that's so and, deep. And Owen and I were, were joking about how, like, Walt says that, and then Vince is like, yeah, I got you, buddy. And I kind of like to think that, that that's, that's Vince's way of writing himself into the show, that, that, that the show is a show, and that Vince is kind of the deity behind it and the one that makes – Makes it all mean you know, interesting. Yeah. So you're like getting a, a you're getting a never ending story type thing. Kind of it's like, like it's Walt's like begging Vince Gilligan to let me have. Well, his he chance. did make that comment. He did make yeah. the comment about the the trust exercise. You know, the yeah. falling back and Prince everything. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and then Brian Cranston. Like, Brian Cranston. Yeah, because yeah. because uh, I know Walt makes some very definitive statements about there not being like good and evil. But then in this last season five, he's talking to Jesse in um, uh, about the blood money. And it's and it's he's he's kind of like I don't know if you believe in that sort of thing that there if yeah. there's a god and devil but we're going to hell you know what I mean and yeah. so it's a weird the show has an interesting relationship with that so it was it was strange it, and especially and the keys are up like they fall from heaven into his into okay. his thing. Yeah, it's most most people who live out in the country I mean we did this growing up a lot too I mean like all of our granted a Volvo is not farm equipment or anything like that but we always left our keys in close proximity so to whatever that is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, like, so, so it somebody, is a thing. Yeah, I so somebody, movies, somebody's like, walking the driveway or something like that you're like boom okay you can move their vehicle or like the the farm truck or whatever out of the yeah. way. Granted a Volvo stuff yeah. farm yeah. truck. Yeah. Brought to you by Volvo. Hang on, Richard Ryan. <laughs> Elliot and I grew up in Florida. Well, you'd I, be crazy if you I, yeah. I do like your I, I like this because it's it 
you know, nothing hap- everything happens on the show for a reason. All the symbolism, in every frame, there's something intentional happening. Well, and also with that, I'm, uh, just to, to piggyback on it for a second, that's also a very small thing. So you can have, mm-hmm. like, there's deus ex machinas that happen all throughout sure. the show, but that's one of the smaller ones where it's like, there's really no need for it. Like, there, mm-hmm. like he could have gotten in the car, found the keys, and started it, but they needed to put something in there where, like, it was just that tiny moment of, like, listen. And it, it's funny, too, that it was, like, starting a car because you're, you're starting this journey, this, like, explosion that starts the entire rest of the chain of events that happen throughout the rest of the episode. Well, so to sum this up, uh, Walt prayed to God to let him murder uh, yeah. Nazis that God yeah. gave I, him. I, I was about <laughs> to say, it's, him. A, it's a lot nicer guy because I yeah. would have been like, fuck you, and he turns the can and just blows up. It's like, you're done. Yeah. I don't care. So maybe he was <laughs> praying to the devil. The devil it's let him. true. Yeah. Maybe he is the devil. The devil. Yeah. So, okay, so anyway. Uh, goatee. Interesting Vince Gilligan point. has the goatee. Maybe yeah. he's the well, devil. Well, well. Uh, okay, so we so we 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 follow Jesse. We're back to Jesse now, and we get that beautiful memory of his, mm-hmm. which is obviously like a you know a, a heightened memory with the beautiful lighting and all of that of of him building that box that that he talked about. I forgot what season it was in, but he was at AA and he was talking the about rehab, that one yeah, the yeah. rehab thing. Yeah, and he was talking about how proud he was of himself for building that wooden box in shop class, and he polished it's it. Fair, and it was like, perfect. When he told the story, I was like, dude, it's just a box, bro. But when he showed <laughs> yeah. that box, I was like. Bro, a sweet Great box. Bo- hey, sweet dude, box, hey, bro, man. we got box payoffs. You got yeah. skills with this. <laughs> they paid yeah. off. <laughs> they really tied up that loose end yeah. because this whole time I was like, like, yeah, but how good a box <laughs> could it be? <laughs> I, think, I think that's really good, though, like, especially this this late to show that, you know, there are, there are things, even in, like, a really dark life, be it a junkie or somebody who's recovering or whatever, that there are moments where they take pride in something and something yep. that they really care about. So it just adds that much more to uh, the equation where when he, Walt does get there, you're like, no. Ah! Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, with poor Jesse, like, what? I mean, we can only imagine. So it's at least been a year of him being in this like slavery, this sure. servitude, yeah. and he's got he's all grizzled. He's got the beard, but I mean, you got to think about like w- he's just so tortured, literally and 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 emotionally, and he, he, you know. Watching Andrea die in cold mm-hmm. blood, and then knowing that Brock's life is on the line, we 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 have him flashing to this memory of building the box, which, by the way, he ended up selling for weed. Do you guys remember yeah. that? <laughs> he ended up selling for weed. But he he, it's just him escaping that prison. He his apron is tugged on something, and then he we see him in the yeah. in the disgusting lab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that cage where he's just grizzled and done, and he's just. It's so sad. I also to like see him that way. like from the the beginning of the show when you your, your first shot of Jesse is like popping out of this window after he's like been shacking up with this this neighbor of the house that he's at or whatever. Yeah. And then I I you know and I think most people know this by now, but like they said that Aaron Paul was only supposed to last for a couple episodes, and then or one so episode, good. right? Or something like no, that. No, the first season I thought. The and first then, season. And then the writers okay. oh, the first season. Ended okay. the first season early. Um, but I can't, I can't help but imagine like throughout all of these later seasons, like it had to have been a challenge for the writers to like figure out what to do with Jesse because they knew he was so loved and he was a vital part. And if you listen, if you watch sort of the dog. Um, metaphor that they used for him throughout the entire season it makes perfect sense the yeah. fact that he was the one to escape because mm-hmm. the entire time it was like uh, these writers had this character that they knew they couldn't get rid of and they knew he could be a catalyst and they knew he could be like the cause to other people's effects essentially but like it's really interesting that like he's leashed up and then he finally gets to just roam free and of everybody mm-hmm. like that was the biggest surprise to me because i didn't expect him and to phil said survive. that he's going to Pick up Brock. That's a prequel for Need for Speed. Uh, <laughs> he's, driving, he's driving the El Camino it out is, of there. It's a good he's, point. He's going, going to pick up Brock, did and you, then he's going to start a bakery somewhere. Did you guys watch that trailer? I, unfortunately. No, I, I can't. Oh. Like, I'm not going to do oh, it. Oh, it's so I, bad. I don't want to because it, I want to. It takes so itself bad. so seriously, oh, yeah. and, and it shouldn't. In fairness, Aaron Paul did say he did that movie so that he could do, like, other indie things and, and yeah. more small. Yeah, a lot of actors can. do that. A lot of actors do that. Can I say that for me, I think the relationship I cared about most was Walt and Jesse. And the one thing that kind of... I don't want to say disappointed, but kind of I wanted to see more of it. Like, we got the fallout with Walt and Skyler and Walt and Hank, and I just didn't care about those as much as the fallout between Walt. And, like, I wanted to see – I wanted to have basically another fly moment, except where they just 
unleash on each other. You're the only person in the world saying, I wanted another, another fly. fly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, what you said? That's sad because that's a great episode. But, uh, it's a great episode. Ryan Johnson directed that one, right? right? Yeah, the the good. payoff, the, the, I, but I will take that nod that they had at the end. Mm -hmm. For one, again, we're jumping ahead of ourselves and we'll get back to it. But the, but the Quit derailing us, <laughs> DJ. No, <I'm> <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell us what you want. Let's get back to Need for Speed. Tell me what you want. Let's talk about that box Jesse made. It was beautiful. Speak loud. Uh, uh, <laughs> tell me what you want, and then I'm not. He finally had agency after after Walt used them, Hanks used them, the Nazis have used them, yeah. everybody's used them. He finally said, "I'm not going to give you what you want," and uh, and that nod of that it was perfect. Like, yeah. That like it was perfect. I thank you. I'll take that. Well, perfect. I know, I'll yeah, and that's and I love that kind of like you know the whole episode, the whole series feels like a western to me. And mm -hmm. Vince Gilligan has has made those parallels. He's he's discussed that before. And uh, you do have that, like, you know, that Western twang, that twangy song, uh, Come On the Radio, when Walt turns on oh, that yeah. Volvo finally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he's singing that song in the desert when he's building there's such his a contraption, too. There's a self-awareness of this show that I, for one, it, like, always freaked me out because I, like, I don't, I never want to be oversaturated with anything. And I felt like when The Hobbit was coming out and, like, when The Hobbit was being made, I know this is, like, totally, like, derailing a little bit. But, like, there was this transparency with the movie where it was, like, this is us on the set. This is us. There's the, us going through the script and stuff. And I was always, like, you're ruining a piece of the magic. And I was always afraid that they were going to do that with Breaking Bad because there was a level of transparency. And Vince Gilligan would always be, like, yeah, this is where I'm coming from. These are the parallels. These are the symbols. But it never did. It was, like, it was okay for the show to admit that it was a show, which they did anytime they played that kind of music they always like <laughs> nodded or winked to the audience yeah, yeah. and it was totally fine like we the audience yeah. just wholeheartedly accepted it well yeah and that's what, like one of the best things about the show on top of all the other best things about the show but there's a there's like an endless almost library of of things outside of the show itself there's the podcast where the creators mm -hmm. and the editors like go super in depth about the the symbolism <laughs> You know, the visuals, the cinematography, the acting, everything. And then there's, you know, the documentaries on the disc, the featurettes, the, you know, there's the webisodes. There's there's this rich library of outside uh, knowledge about the show. And it doesn't detract from the show. Not at all. And I, and I think, it. for me, like, I know Owen is is a big guy uh, about the podcast. He loves the podcast. And he's just a big guy in general. And he's a big yeah, guy massive. in general. Yeah, God. I mean, how and does of course he, we're talking about are you dick. okay over nah, there? Exactly. You, <laughs> <laughs> he's well in depth. <laughs> but no, I mean, the, but I have I haven't listened to the podcast in a really long time, mostly because I would listen to podcasts on a commute, and now I don't have time to just sit and listen to a podcast. But um, now we have just this, this it's just such a rich library of everything about every episode you've ever wanted to know available to us. And it's almost like we have a class on Breaking Bad yeah. that we could just take now mm -hmm. and just literally delve deep into each episode, which I think is fantastic and amazing. But, so, but the Western thing so I was going to So Walt got a gun. Up, yeah. Let's yeah exactly. <laughs> well, the Western thing I was going to bring up, and, and, and with you talking about Jesse and Walt like kind of nodding at each mm -hmm. other, to me that was totally like the, the cowboy the hat, hat kind of tip yeah. of the hat, like, well, we've been through this journey. I'm the reason why you are this way. You're the reason why I am this way. And mm -hmm. it's just an understanding that, you know, and Jesse yeah. knows he's going to die. He knows yeah. he is. But we'll get, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. You're an enabler. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's start. Maybe we should go this by, we should either do this by confrontation uh, or by <laughs> right. casualty. Because yeah. that's pretty much the main two yeah. things that happened in this episode. But the first confrontation, and when it happened was, uh, I flipped out. I was like, no, everything oh, I know yeah. is wrong. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was literally, well, my, my wife yeah. was next to me. I was like, babe, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I was wrong about this, I'm I'm leaving. I know. That that's what everybody was saying, I was like, too. I'm jumping yeah. out the window. I know we're on the first floor, and it's not going to hurt at all, but <laughs> I'm still going to do it. You're going to sprain your ankle real I'm gonna, bad. I'm going to just violently hurl myself somewhere. Because well, he goes yeah. to the, the gray mat. I'm freaking out that he's going to walk in and cap these mofos. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. I was like, no, because I remember yeah. we had that conversation. Yeah. I was like, there's no way he's going to kill those people. And I was, I was freaking out. And then he yeah. did. Yeah, it and was then really he smart. The yeah. play he did was really smart. It's crazy. I, yeah. I, th I think everyone, like, when you see the pile of money, you're like, oh, I, I get it. It makes sense. These yeah. people yeah. are totally yeah. loaded. And, like, before he even before he even said it, you got the feeling he was going to say something yeah. Yeah. along the lines yeah. of, like, black man, male, and there's, there's going to be people out there. But come on. Who saw the lasers coming? Yeah. That was so no cool. No one like, saw the lasers coming. That was so coming. cool. And yeah. I like how when we were watching... I don't know about you. I was terrified, and then when you think about it in hindsight, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's no, a big, well, it's a yeah, big game. Yeah, like it's a big joke. But also, I kind of want to talk about the whole like the plan because mm -hmm. Walt obviously he was secluded out in in the wilderness for yeah. God knows how long. So 
he, you know, maybe he formulated the plan quickly, maybe not, maybe it was like over time. Well, he had a long drive to go to. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I gotta true. figure this out. All right, but that's the thing. Like, uh, talked about one that. big gun, two laser pointers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna need two idiots uh, to help. I got help. a truck full of cash. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. But see, but the, the thing is, is like, goons. that plan is so perfect. It's perfect. That's what happens when I you mean, have a team of writers. See, yeah, and that's right? exactly what I was going to say. You can't, it's so perfect that like it would take 15 great writers to yeah. come up with that, such such a perfect plan. It's so simple, I too. Mean, like, it is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because he can't, he, he, it's tearing him up inside that he can't give that money he worked so hard for to his family in some way. And it, through all the selfishness, which we'll get to, and for all the reasons why he ended up still going greedier and greedier and greedier, he still wanted his family to get that money in I some agree. way. And I agree, and I feel like even with the relationships that a lot of people talk about, getting closure with Lydia and Skylar and everyone, I feel like that money was one of the driving factors of this entire process. Yeah. And mm -hmm. getting that type of closure mm -hmm. with knowing that's gonna go to his family, mm -hmm. that's that's, Arguably one of the biggest, yeah. biggest yeah. moments. And yeah. he got really ahead of himself. Yeah. Like, he he had that goal of how much money he needed he, he, way in the beginning. Yeah. And he's like, this is how much. Season two. Yeah. First episode of season yeah. two. This is what I need for my family, and then I'm done. And then he just, he loved the evil so much, yeah. he just went a little There's overboard. But I don't think he loved the evil. Courses. I think he loved the power that well, he, well, he well, respect that he never had. Right. evil. I mean, we could. But there, there's always been two driving forces in the show, one with his family and one with the pride. And he just basically, through good storytelling, they were like, what, what is he going to care about? He's going to care about two things. He's going to care about his pride, and he's going to care about his family. And right. that's what you see in the beginning well, of the episode, and, and, him taking yeah. care of that first part. And you have to think about how, because he's screwed. In the last episode... He's screwed. His son says, why aren't you dead yet? Yeah. You know, Gretchen and Elliot are on the TV. Just selling them just out. Just selling them out and being amazing and, and good people and rich <laughs> in the right way. Yeah. And, and he's just done. The cops know where he is now. He, and you're thinking, how can anything end well for him? And then you're thinking, all he wanted really was his family get that money. We've already made that point. So what's the only way he can give his family that money? And I was thinking about this last night. The fact that Gretchen and Elliot definitely will give Walt Jr. that money. Yeah. Walt Jr.'s gonna get that money. Yeah, There's no way he won't. Yeah. Yeah. Walt Jr. will never know. Exactly. He'll yeah. never yeah. know that it was from his dad. He'll yeah. always know, unless Gretchen and Elliot somehow tell him, which yeah. they yeah. probably won't, no. is that it was just a donation from them and they felt bad and, and he will enjoy that money in some way and maybe go to college, maybe buy a car, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But but Walt, and, and Walt, you know, any penny... So as a father, Walt wins. <laughs> <laughs> father of the year. Father yeah. of the year, right? Yeah, right. But it's yeah. interesting because uh, when you're talking about that in the, the episode right after in season four when Walt and Jesse duke it out and Walt's on pain meds and he's out of it and he's, he tells his son, it's after that, oh, he yeah. tells his son his memory of his dad yeah. and he's like, I don't want you to remember me that way. No. And it's like you think about the way Flynn's gonna remember him, and it's not, not it's so not good, man. It's, it's not, not good. It's I mean, not and that's the thing. He again, Walt kind of dug his hole, and mm -hmm. he, he couldn't win completely. Walt Jr. will get that money, but in, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, he hated his guts. So Walt yeah. Jr. hated but his I, guts. I feel like that's that's life. It I is. Mean, there, there, yeah. I mean, and retribution to, to, to that to that extent. There's always a point in time when a father and a son that the son always looks up to the father as a superhero. And to the extent of Walt being a meth kingpin or drug kingpin or whatever, uh, might not be the exact situation all of us go through with our, <laughs> our fathers, but there is a time when they kind of come down on that pedestal and you realize, no, this person is human. And it's just something fucking but I mean, that, that's gotta get over, you. son. <laughs> I mean, Get not, over yeah, it! Your dad on. was a murderer that killed your uncle! Get over it! Okay, so moving ahead after the whole freaking gray matter scene, uh, Walt decides to... He visits uh, Skyler. He visits finally. Skyler. Yeah. They have their like very dramatic meeting. They like finally resolve things. You see him for the first time admit that he did it for himself, um, which was basically like, I feel like Vince Gilligan was just writing through it and being like, no, here's what happened. Here's why yeah. he did all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Um, which was a huge moment in and of itself. You get to find out a little bit about at least where, what his motivation became, not necessarily what it started as, uh, and then after that, he uh, does something else. Well, I mean, but it has to be talked about really quickly about how Walt, he, he stopped lying to Skylar and gave her that kind of like weight off of her shoulders that the reason why he even went this far was because 
he felt alive being a yeah. criminal, yeah. and he felt alive being evil and and killing and That's, making. Yeah, keep saying evil. It's not evil. <laughs> it was definitely evil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did take a weight off of her that, like, he yeah. was fixing as many things as he, he possibly could. Like, he says when he's talking to the Grey Matter people, he's yeah. like, look, you get a chance to make things right, um, which is kind of a, uh, what his motivation was for a lot of the stuff that he was doing. Yeah. For all of the stuff that he was doing. Yeah. After he talks to Skylar, he leaves Skylar, and then he goes to... Lydia. Lydia. No. So, he, that me, Lydia, which I think, um, the moment so there was one Stevia, the Stevia. packet... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember that? I was, like, freaking out. I was like, holy crap. Well, yeah, and she's, like, flipping it yeah, around flipping in her around. hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the moral here is, 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 uh, Cut, cut your patterns. If you go to a coffee shop every Friday, 10 a.m., do the stevia, maybe just change it up every once in a while. Maybe more guys... artificial sugars are bad for you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah too. Exactly. that too. I Bring saw a, a tweet last night cane. that was like, actually, with rice and stevia is still probably healthier than equal. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to mention, he says goodbye to Holly, he says goodbye to Flynn, oh, he yeah. does the gun Oof. thing, and then basically the, the big uh, coming to God moment, I think, where he ends up going out and seeing the Aryans yeah. for the very last time, and it's... Oh. Uh, I thought one of the most, let me say this about the, the climax real fast, about this idea of this gun that pops out of a car based on clicking the lock button on the keychain, okay? <laughs> that is literally the most Breaking Bad-esque ending they could ever have done. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're talking about a show where they freaking let a body fall through a bathtub and, like, <laughs> dissolve. And, and they use guts a, everywhere. Guts everywhere. A giant magnet that they use to wipe out an yeah, entire... Yeah, a man with half his face off like, comes out of a room yeah, and adjusts his tie. Yeah. The show is ridiculous yeah. and they ended on this like moment of him like perfectly putting the car where it needs yeah. to That's be. That's the thing, it was in. like everything's about impulsion in this show, except the yeah. final act that Walt commits is perfectly executed yeah. mm-hmm. and planned. And yeah. also mass murder. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and, so, and, yeah. and all of the murders there, I mean, I was the whole time thinking, oh man, let's see, he, he did this, he did this, or well, how could he have done that, or whatever, yeah. trying to break down how that contraption was in the trunk. But well, I was there were, when there I saw it, I was like, what is Richard Ryan thinking? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. On, it's on a <laughs> server wait. motor when the tr- deck lid pops up, it triggers this. No, But, but uh, I love how it fired through the trunk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. that strip of like, bullets. So many hundreds of rounds going through would definitely cut through that. But let's let's jump on the deaths real fast because there were so many really important deaths there mm-hmm. between Todd mm-hmm. between uh, I forget the, the Jack Jack, Jack yeah. and everybody yeah. so it's so, really telling that the gun didn't kill the people that we didn't want the gun to kill <laughs> yeah yeah I know <laughs> the well, gun because got we everybody needed those, the, exactly the sto- we needed those moments <laughs> yeah the, and God, the story didn't want them to just well, die. Like, well it's like I'm gonna crank this up a little bit higher because I know Jack and Todd are gonna uh-huh. hit the floor well yeah. we have to talk about really quick when Walt's first there you have that sense of hopelessness because Jack is so Jack is is and I want to say he he's not the best villain in the show, but he's the, he might be the scariest villain in the show because he he can't be reasoned with at all. Yeah, and he's he's he made his mind up ten minutes he ago. He made his yeah. mind yeah exactly. He's just a murderer straight up, and he's a Nazi to boot. So. You, that's you, generally evil. frowned upon. That's, yeah, evil. that's evil. That's evil. So you get that. You get that murder impression. Murder is evil. Yeah. You get murder that is making meth as a drug lord is evil. Yeah. Yeah. Not well, all murder is evil. Wait, wait. Seems trying to make a point. They're, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, no. You get to. You then you get well, that impression. Right. Steve has a point. I know, right? You get the impression that Jack's like, eh, don't don't make the mess on my car, but just get rid of this guy. Fuck him. Like, just he's dead. No. Done. No. And you're like, that's it. Walt's done here. But no, he ha- he gets to Jack's pride. Yeah. Jesse's your partner, and yeah. he, he Walt knows because of how much he he's cares like, about He's like, I will life. tell you where the money is. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't care. Moment. That was yeah. great. Amazing. That was blood on the camera. But that, that, that's that's oh, that's where so that's good. where Walt. That's that's why I say he's not evil. That's where like the humanity shines through. Is like, yes, he was a product of his circumstances. I would also say that evil people can be human as well. And yeah, I think that's what you, makes I evil mean, people terrifying. Well, because but that, because, that because moment, if that we're moment, he accepts. He accepts that no, it's it's not about the money. I've been doing this. I'm not gonna give you that gratification. I'm ending it now. I'm no. accepting it's, who I was, and I'm gonna be the bigger man and do this. It's a classic like dichotomy of the anti-hero, and there is no right answer, and that's how come it's such a fascinating archetype. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walter White especially being one that is so layered because it's been six seasons of television, so there's no, the reason we can have these conversations is because, for one, the medium that is television, which allows for like all of these nuances to happen, and the fact that we can be bounced around in 19,000 different directions, yeah. but at the core of who Walter White is, there is no easy resolution on whether he is good or he is bad, because he's both. He it's is a perspective. So undeniably, he's human by definition. So here's the thing. Uh, what ends up happening is, Jesse and Walt face each other 
with the Nazis. You know, bullets fly everywhere. Jesse does the job of the hut move on Todd, no. chokes him out. Todd's Finally. dead. That's Finally. all you get from us. That's Todd. all you get. I would, say, you get. I would say Todd is the scariest person yeah, on the show. Yeah, Todd debatably. Is way more yeah, frightening yeah. than Jack to me. Exactly. Kill him with kindness. Love and his then, nice shirt when he's talking to uh, Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jack gets his final moment, just like Jack blowing Hank away. He didn't even let him have that final word. Boom, yeah. dead. I wouldn't even let him have a cigarette. Well, there it is. <laughs> so, uh, and then it's Walt and Jesse, finally. <laughs> and Walt gives Jesse the choice. Take the gun, do it. Yeah. Jesse says, I want you to tell me what you want. And then that's when Walt says. The act says, of defiance, yeah. 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 I you want that it. moment to say no, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesse wanted to be in control for once and not be used. Yeah. Let me live! <laughs> and so then, so then, of course, you know, Jesse drives off into the night, the dog is freed, the stray gets to run away, hopefully find food somewhere. Uh, Walter <laughs> White goes down in the basement, you don't know what he's gonna do, and finally he dies around his second love, maybe his first love. <sighs> Walt's final moment alone, in this this lab, this grungy lab, that's nothing like his original one or the super lab. It's just this Nazi gross, like probably poop on the floor yeah. type disgusting place. Jesse's poop. Yeah. But yeah. Walt is still walking around admiring the science and admiring the cook Agreed. and the thing that made him live and and feel purpose in life, and and you kind of feel like. He's looking over Jesse's work in a way, and it's almost like teacher and student mentality oh, yeah, in a way. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, and it, he's proud of Jesse in that moment too because he sees the conditions are clean, and he. Pro I don't know if he got to see the he product. Learned so much. He and applied yeah, himself. He did apply <laughs> he himself finally, finally. Applied himself. finally. <laughs> and then Walt kind of, you know, he puts his hand on the big barrel, blood on his hand, bullet wound, dying. You hear the police sirens in the background. And he just smiles because he does love the science, and and you know, and we can't really tell in that moment if it is the meth that he loves, his product that he loves, or the science, or the chemistry, or whatever it is. I don't think it's the meth. I don't think I don't think he ever went and said, "Hey, I'm gonna get people fucked up." But yeah, he's never but, but it is his legacy, is. and he's dying in that lab, and the police are gonna find him there with the assumptions that he was still cooking there. Yeah, but I ag agree. But I, I, this goes back to the whole evil and, and pride thing. I feel like that that's the thing is he was taking pride in the science and being able to do something that nobody else before yep. him was capable of doing. Agreed. And and that's been the whole driving factor, this whole thing. He was he was a nobody who had gray matter take this, this, this thing that he worked so hard for and he would have been recognized for and it was just like given away to some, or stolen by somebody else. So he was able to do something through this, this meth an empire or whatever, this empire business that he created, mm. and he did something that nobody else has done before, and he was proud of it. He wasn't proud that people were dying, or, you know, people were, you that know, That was just part of the stuff. territory. It was, it was, but <laughs> that, that was just, that was just, that <laughs> you was can't make it without that's breaking why, That's why I say he wasn't evil, he was, he was just a proud man who was just like, he was consumed by circumstance. I think you're glamorizing him a little bit much. Final thoughts on the, the Breaking Bad finale and then series as a whole, uh, in my opinion, I think this is, Probably, uh, not definitely, but probably the greatest show of all time. Uh, I worry <laughs> about like whether or not there will ever be another show like this, especially when you consider that the medium of television is drastically changing. Um, I think as far as storytelling goes, and as far as using a medium to its fullest potential, that this is the single greatest example of it ever. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that it ended the way it did. I think it was beautiful, and I sympathize with all of the characters, even though I don't necessarily like all of them. And uh, I think Vince, Gilli Vince Gilligan is a genius. So that, those are my thoughts. Moving on to Me? Andrew Ryan. Yeah. Well, uh, as a as, uh, finale, I was really happy. There was a lot of closure for me personally in that because uh, I was a little late to the game. I didn't start watching Breaking Bad till a couple of months ago, and then I just powered through all five seasons. So you it's, not, it's, it's nice. It's nice, like caring for these characters and then seeing their arcs and everything. Uh, for me, it's it's uh, any series that I watch, any movie, I, I want to escape from reality and then just just get a perspective of somebody else who's living in another universe, you know, or something like that. And that's why I say I was along with Walt for this, this ride through all of these circumstances and I, I can have empathy for him and everything. So I was, I was, I, I really enjoyed the show. I mean, I, I, I couldn't ask for a better, a better series to go through. Okay. So. No. I think uh, with the finale, I think it was a great finale. I don't know if it'll it'll weave the impression on me that the Shields finale uh, did, Ooh. but but I think overall, I think overall, this is definitely one of the best shows that has been on the TV. The, there's a there's a poetry to it. I think the performances, starting with Brian Cranston, and uh, going to Aaron Paul and down the list of everybody on there, really really 
elevated material. I think everybody, it's one of those things that you see that everybody was firing on all cylinders each episode to make something really special. It's gonna be it's gonna be weird to not not have it. I think this is the you know this the show was a lot to like the Sopranos, the Shield, to the Wire, but I think it elevated all those and I, and I think it's it's changed the landscape. Yeah, I mean, and and for me, I just feel like there's this big void now because the show is over, but we do have this series to watch forever, endlessly. We'll have the collection soon. The big box set comes out really soon. Which you're going to burn for me. Which I am absolutely... I really appreciate it. I will not burn anything for you. Um, but, I mean, the, I, I don't know. I I will say, for me, this is the greatest TV show of all time, to me. I mean, it's tough to say because I haven't seen every show. And, and I mean, all Hannah time Montana is everything. Hannah Montana pretty tight. Really tight. <laughs> Solid I mean, arcs, bro. And before this, I'd say my favorite drama of all time was The Sopranos. And, and I feel like this show blows that show out of the water in all ways, in every way. And to me, I'm such a fanatic when it comes to, like, things like this. And when I, when I love something so much, you know, I buy clothes and... and toys and products and I kind of like build shrines to these amazing series and and to me it's not I don't do that with everything you know yeah. and it's so special this show to me because it's just it's such a study of character and humanity and story and writing and filmmaking and everything I love so much uh, and it's just a perfect it's perfect it's just perfect it's yeah. perfect to me <laughs> all right so guys thank you so very much for joining us on this show. Thank you to everyone here for being here for this. Um, we have the prequel series coming out, Better Call Saul, at some point, <laughs> starring uh, Saul Goodman, who is gone now. Bob Vince Gilligan will be involved, and so we kind of have that to look forward to, but what do we do, guys? Well, do we do? Life is meaningless. I think, life is I meaningless. Think, I think we I start mean. making up our own, see uh, what happens next. I think I think Jesse finds Saul and runs a Cinnabon with him <laughs> while he's taking care of Rob. And then on the side, he's making wood products well, that he sells think, on fan uh, fiction. Uh, yeah. Fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse Etsy. can't take Brock, though, because how is he going to explain that? Yeah, that doesn't yeah. make any I, sense. I, uh, no, I'll take your, the kid. Your mother was murdered. Yeah. yeah. It was my kid. And it was <laughs> kind of my fault, but. I look trustworthy. Pay no attention to these 19 stars. What if in the will? What if in the. He did. He could be a cast member of Road Warrior now. Jesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 guys, guys, the most important thing we need to close on, what happened to Huel? But I love nerding out with you guys about Breaking Bad. Thank you for joining us. Sorry Phil couldn't be here. Phil, we love you, buddy, and uh, thanks for watching. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and this video, or you can uh, watch our other videos by clicking this annotation. And, uh, yeah, that's how you do that. You're yes. Steve, you're, who are you? I'm Steve Zaragoza. Oh, hey. Ellie Morgan. Ellie Morgan? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Richard Ryan. Oh, Richard, Richard Ryan. Ryan. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I'm a good. huge fan of your guns. Team Jesse. Team Jesse. Uh, Team Jesse. Uh, Team Jesse. Uh, Team Jesse. <laughs> Just this afternoon, I had an extra $200,000 that I would be doing you a favor. <laughs> Stop. 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 Yes! Whoa! Whoa.